Today on Hot Thai Kitchen, we are making Tom Yum Gung. Sawadee Welcome to Hot Thai Kitchen. Today we're making possibly the most famous soup in Thai cuisine. We're making Tom Yum. Now let's look at the name. Tom means to boil, so in a dish name, it's an indication that it's a soup. Yum actually refers to a category of Thai salads. So in a way, Tom Yum means salad soup which might seem strange, but it's because the soup uses the exact same seasoning ingredients as the salad. And now because it's spot prawn season in Vancouver where I'm living right now, um, I, we're making tom yam gung or tom yam with prawns. So let's get started. So first let's talk about liquids. I got here four quarts of shrimp stock and I have a video on how to make shrimp stock, but you can also just use water or chicken stock, okay? Um, to that, I'm going to add the herbs. I'm going to add what I call the trinity, the tom yum trinity. First, we're using lemongrass. Lemongrass sometimes comes trimmed and everything, but sometimes it comes all like this. So how you prep it is you first cut off the top dry bits, and then you cut off the bottom. And then there's usually a loose dry layer that you're also going to remove. So this is where the flavor is. This is where the flavor is concentrated. And you're going to smash it first with the back of your knife. Okay. Now this releases the flavors, break the cells of the plants and releases the flavors into the soup more easily. And then we're going to just cut it into chunks. That goes into the soup. And then next, we're going to have galangal. Galangal is a rhizome. And it may look like a ginger, but it's very different and it's not substitutable. Um, the flavors are like yin and yang. Galangal is cooling fla fl flavor, whereas ginger is a hot flavor. Um, the smell of galangal reminds me of lush pine forest. So we're not going to use this part. We're going to use seven to eight thin rounds of this part. It's small, so I'm just adding some extra. In that goes. Actually, that looks kind of small. Usually, I add seven to eight of about this size. So I'm gonna add a couple more. And then finally, we have our kefir lime leaves. Now, kefir lime leaves look just like this. These have actually been frozen. That's how I store them. So when you buy them, there's usually more than you can use. Just keep them in the freezer in a Ziploc bag. They'll last you forever. So just five to six leaves. And you're just going to bruise them by tearing them. And by doing this, you bruise them and it helps them release their flavors into the soup. And then, lastly, our spice, some Thai chilies. Now, I'm not going to finely chop this, but I will just kind of bruise it a little bit. Just crush it. And these have also been frozen. That's how I keep my Thai chilies. Maybe cut it in two pieces and add that in there. Now, I didn't want to like cut them into small pieces because I do want them to be visible. I don't want people to accidentally take in a piece of chopped chili and that's going to be really, really spicy. This way I bruise it, it releases its spice as it infuses, but there's a big chunk so people can know to avoid them. So I'm going to let this come to a boil and then let it simmer. It doesn't take a very long time. A few minutes after it's come into a boil will do. You'll be able to smell it really well. And meanwhile, let's prep our other ingredients. So the other ingredients, I've got oyster mushrooms here, about three cups. The big ones, I just split them into bite-sized pieces. You can use other kinds of Asian mushrooms, such as enoki mushroom or shimeji or beach mushrooms work really well. Um, don't use the button mushrooms, though. They don't do as well in soup. Uh, so we've got that. And next are prawns or shrimp. So I've got spot prawns here. Um, they came in alive and they're dead now. So what I did to prep them is I tear off the head. And uh, the head I saved for making shrimp stock, which I already did. And then spot prawns, when they're fresh and raw, it's really hard to peel. So I'm just going to leave the peel in. But if you're using regular prawns, you can just peel everything and take them add them to your shrimp stock. Now I cut the back down so it's easier to eat and then I'm going to use a paring knife and then butterfly it, open it up a little bit more 
check to see if there's any veins. This one doesn't have any veins. And that'll make it cook faster. It'll also be easier for people to peel when they go to eat it. Okay, so I've got about eight of them right here. You can use more if you want. This recipe is for four. So um, you can just think, you know, how much, how many shrimp per person you want to add. So let's look at our seasoning. As I mentioned, these seasonings are the same as in a yum or a Thai salad. First, our salting agent, we have fish sauce, three tablespoons of fish sauce. And our sour agent, we've got uh, half a cup of lime juice. It's about two to three juicy limes. And you've got a little bit of sweet to just round out the acid and the salt, about a teaspoon or two of sugar. Start with one and you can always taste and add. Now the next ingredient, you probably have this if you've been to Thai restaurants. This will probably be in your tom yum, but it's actually an optional ingredient. Um, it's Thai chili paste. It's called Nam Prik Pao. And the jar comes like this. It says chili paste with soybean oil. Um, we, it's a relatively new thing. The old rustic style of tom yum does not contain shrimp paste. But if you're going to add it, only add it if you're making tom yum with shrimp. Because this is made from shrimp and it'll have a shrimpy flavor, it'll add shrimpy flavor to everything that you make. So when we make tom yum chicken or tom yum fish or other kinds of tom yum, we actually don't do this. We don't uh, include that. Um, and that's another thing in Thailand, when you're making tom yum kai, which is tom yum chicken or tom yum pla, we, it's not just a matter of switching out protein for another. The seasoning and the herbs actually change a little bit too, but that's for another time. Uh, so that's all our seasoning. And now we're gonna, the soup is boiling now, so let's go back to the stove. So the soup's done simmering now, and um, if you use water, you'll be able to tell that the water will start turning a little bit yellowish or greenish, and you can smell it, that's how you know. So it's done here, and I, I do need to say that these herbs are for infusing purposes only. Okay, they're really tough and chewy and they're not meant to be eaten. Thai people usually leave them in for garnish and it makes them look pretty. Um, but if you're serving it to a non-Thai, make sure you either tell them that you know, these, do not eat these herbs or you can remove them at this stage where it's done infusing, just use a slotted spoon and just take them out. Okay, okay so we're going in first with the oyster mushrooms. And then we're going to let it kind of come back to a boil. So after it's come back to a boil, then you're going to go in with your shrimp. And now you're just going to stir to split them apart a little bit. And then after about 15-30 seconds, let it come back to a boil a little bit. I'm going to turn it off. And the reason why I'm going to turn it off is because this is really hot and we've already butterflied our shrimp. so. If I cook it all the way, I'm actually going to overcook it with the residual heat that's still in the pot. If I let the shrimp sit in this hot water, in about a minute or so, it's just going to be perfectly cooked and we're not going to risk overcooking it. Okay, so now that that's done, we're going to go in with our seasoning, lime. And once you've added the lime, you don't want to cook it because if you cook lime, it actually kind of ruins the flavor, the fish sauce. The chili paste. And the sugar. Stir it, making sure that the chili paste is all dissolved. It smells very good. So, now we're going to taste it. Always, always taste your food because when you're cooking with lime, every lime has different acidity. Um, every fish sauce, every brand of fish sauce has different saltiness, and especially when it comes to soup, the amount of water that evaporates, there's a lot of variables that go into this, so you always taste and adjust accordingly. So what you're looking for, the leaf flavor should be sour, and the salt and the sweet it's followed by the salt, and the sweet is just kind of there to round off everything. And the spiciness should be obvious. So this is not a kind of dish where it's mild. So the chili needs to play um, a leading role, one should say. All right, let's go and plate it up. It's not going to all fit, but that's okay. And as you can see, the herbs 
actually make a very pretty garnish. And then the shrimp heads I saved from my shrimp stock making earlier. These actually work perfect as garnish. Now, you know, it's nice every once in a while to be able to see the animal you're eating in the eye and, and be connected to your food that way. Most of the time, food in stores come now with no heads, peels already gone, no feet, no nothing. It's just the pre-trimmed edible parts. And it's nice every once in a while to see what they really look like in nature. A little bit of cilantro garnish. And then we're done. Our tom yam kung. And thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next time for your next delicious Thai meal.